All right, hello my people. It's Becca de Mulan here from GetLiveEnergy.com and I've got a video for you today about reducing pain while you are traveling. It's um, December 4th, I believe, so um, you know Christmas is coming up and this year a lot of people are going to be traveling that haven't traveled in quite a while and I was just thinking about um, this topic as something that could be beneficial to a bunch of my amazing clients. Hi clients, thanks for watching. Um, because you know, you might be traveling this winter uh, or moving into the next year and there's nothing worse than traveling somewhere and going to visit family for example. And, uh, or you know, say you're trying to go on a vacation and you get there and your back is just aching or your hips are so tight, you know, from sitting on that plane for all those hours. Or God forbid, you know, getting stuck in the airport and having to sleep on the floor like one of my clients had to do recently. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a few things you can do to reduce uh, body aches and pains while you're traveling, whether by car or by plane, and I wanted to share some of those with you today. Okay, so... Um, first and foremost, um, sitting still, sitting at a computer all day is not good for your people's, wait a minute, okay. Most of you know that sitting still for long periods of time is not exactly great for your body. So whether that's at your job or on a long road trip or on a flight, it doesn't really matter because it's still the same sedentary situation. Okay, so when you're sitting down like i am right now you know your hips are bent your arms are bent everything is in what's called a shortened position so um like if this is a shortened bicep this is an elongated bicep get it short long so when you're in a, sitting in a, on a flight or on a in a vehicle for a long period of time your hips and your muscles are in a shortened position and then when you get up it feels weird because things have been kind of scrunched for so long that you gotta like stretch them out okay so the biggest thing that you can do regardless of your type of trip whether it's plane or vehicle is stretch your body before during and after I know you might think like you're the freak over here standing in the uh, you know, bathroom aisle or the exit row stretching, but get this, okay, one time I flew to Australia and flights from the US to Australia are about 22 hours long. So that's a long flight, that's a long time to be on a plane. And um, I sat in the emergency exit row and there was a lot of foot room and they always say like, excuse me, would you be willing to sit in the emergency exit row? There's, there's more leg room. They always, you know, pitch it to you as more leg room. But um, once I sat in the emergency exit row once, I'm now willing to do it on any flight because, you know what I mean, if, if this plane's going down, don't you want to make sure you can get out? And don't you want to make sure someone opens the door? So I like, I'll take that responsibility. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm on this flight from LA to New Zealand, you know, and I'm going to be on this plane for 20 hours. Well. I sat in the emergency exit row and I did have a ton of foot room and it was actually enough room to like sit down on the floor. And at one point I was like, dude, I'm so, you know, I was like, you know, I'm, I'm like putting my leg like this and then I'm like sitting like this and I'm, you know, squirming around in my chair trying to get comfortable on this plane because I've just been on this plane for so long. And I just decided to sit down on the floor, you know, and like bend over and touch my toes and like do a butterfly stretch, you know, that's like a sitting cross-legged. I don't want to use too many yoga pose terms for the people that don't know what those are, but forward fold, you know, butterfly, those kinds of things. Um, and I, this is what's interesting, okay? So I'm sitting on this airplane on the floor down in the exit area, a huge plane, so there's enough room. And I'm stretching and I was like, oh. And what's funny is there was a bunch of people like waiting to use the bathroom because this was one of those huge planes that has like sections. so. Anyway, there was a few people that were like in line to use the bathroom and I felt weird, I gotta admit, even though I'm pretty weird and have always been that way and don't have too much of a problem with being weird, it still feels weird to do things that draw attention and that make people look at you. But anyway, I'm in the exit row stretching and guess what? 
I'm feeling weird because there's people kind of like watching me do this. And guess what? People said, oh, that looks good. Or man, that looks like it feels good. And I heard that and I was like, it does. And the next thing you know, someone's going like, oh, oh. okay. So stretch your body at any and all opportunities that you can. Um, even if that means, you know, once they're like, okay, you guys can walk around the cabin, that you stand up in the middle of the aisle because you're not trying to use the bathroom. So you're not, you don't want to block the bathroom. But let's say it's a time where you can be in the middle of the aisle. Do some lunges, you know, stretch, you know, do like get your legs, you know what I mean? Move your body in whatever way you possibly can. Um, and if you're on a flight that's not super busy, you might be able to get across like two or three seats in the back and stretch out those hamstrings like across the back seat. Okay, but here's another option. So let's say you got a long way to travel across coast to coast or something like that, right? Um, I mean, ideally, we want to be sitting down on that plane, for example, for the as little time as possible. So like if you can get a flight, like for me visiting my family, I got a flight to Portland. So if I can fly up to Portland in a direct flight, I can be there in about two hours and 45 minutes. And that's a really short flight. So I try to book a direct flight. I don't want to have a stop. That seems ridiculous. It's a relatively short flight. But here's the thing. And this is a, a tip that I learned from my 75 year old best friend, Henry. Hey Henry, if you're watching, um, and it's brilliant. Okay, so if you're flying somewhere that's a longer distance than say two to three hours, maybe four hours tops, if you gotta fly somewhere that's five or six hours, why not get a connecting flight? Now here's why. A lot of times the flights that have a connecting you know, stop are cheaper for one, but for two, here's the deal. As long as you're not carrying a bunch of heavy, bulky stuff with you as carry-ons, which we will get to that in a moment, um, you, you, can, uh, you can get off the plane with your backpack or your whatever item and walk up and down the corridor and stretch your legs and go where there's not a lot of people and go do some yoga moves and go stretch it out and go take care of your body in that connecting flight and if it's only two or three hours like it's not that time flies by if you bring your computer or whatever or you download a bunch of shows you want to watch I mean that time flies so two flights might be better than just one if you really value that opportunity to get up and move around and stretch your body out um, in the airport so okay Another uh, flight related is a neck pillow. I have gone 39 years without ever using a neck pillow and now I will never go without it. Because when you fall asleep on the plane with your head like this, or your head like this, it, you're gonna hurt your neck and your neck is gonna be pissed when you wake up. So I, it's frustrating those big poofy ones because they are more comfortable and they keep your head more straight, but um, they take up a lot of room, so I do like the kind that you can like inflate it. I actually need to replace the one that came with my uh, ultimate travel jacket. But um, something to support your neck. I mean, I'm always cold on planes, so I even wear like warm socks and uh, shoes. Like if, even if I'm flying somewhere where I would be getting on this plane in flip flops, and I'm going to be getting to a place that I want to be in flip-flops, I'll still wear my real shoes for the flight just to keep me warm enough that I'm uh, comfortable on the plane and can sleep. You know, they don't give out blankets anymore like they once did. But anyway, I, I like to bring like a shawl or like a sarong style scarf or even just like a nice soft hoodie type of thing that I can kind of like wrap around myself or lay over my legs so that I can be warm enough. Um, but if you're the kind of person who you get hot and you don't get cold, maybe you could just roll your jacket up and use that as a pillow. I am never warm enough to use my jacket as a pillow, so I need to bring an additional pillow thing. And the inflatable kind are pretty amazing because they don't take up a lot of space when you're not using them. But um, support your head and neck. If you know you like to sleep on planes or something about that white noise of being on the plane kind of lulls you into a sleep, Make sure that you've got something to support your head 
or get a windows you know seat and and put your prop your head up against the window because your neck being kinked when you arrive at your destination is gonna suck okay all right let's talk about road trips my mom was gonna drive all the way down to San Diego with her husband and I was like mom that's gonna cost a bunch of money and gas and it's gonna take you two days and Okay, I've gone on a bunch of road trips. I love road trips. There's something so freeing about being on the road and just having your music and the highway out in front of you. I don't know what it is, but I just feel so free, like I could do whatever I want. So I love road trips um, and I think they're awesome. So if you've never taken one, get on a road trip. It's totally great. But here's the thing, if you're trying to get somewhere that is say like a two-day drive or if you're just going on a long like national park tour like I did in 2020 whatever the case may be I really want you to plan to only be in your vehicle for six to eight hours a day tops okay don't be pulling these like 12 hour days driving or 10 hour days I know you want to get to where you're going and you don't want to waste time but if you can lessen the amount of time that you're behind the wheel each day, especially if you're solo, oh my gosh, if you're solo, six to eight hours tops. So if you're mapping this out and you're looking from here to here, for example, let's say I want to drive up to Portland. I'm only going to drive to say the Bay Area, Sacramento, San Francisco, because that's going to take me about eight hours from San Diego. And then I'm going to crash with a friend or get a hotel room or let's say I'm renting a sprinter van and I can just sleep in the van. Whatever the case may be, I'm, I'm going to want to stop after a certain amount of time so that I can get out and move my body and hopefully have enough energy left over to actually stretch and stuff before, you know, go get dinner and stuff like that. But if you're just like sitting in the car for just like, hours and hours and hours and hours and then you're just getting out and going and sitting in a restaurant and eating and then get it, it's just it, you're you're not your digestion isn't gonna work as well because you're not moving you're not gonna be drinking as much water but it, it's a bad um, it's a perfect storm to feel like shit when you get to where you're going you got to get up and move around and you're gonna have to stop to use the bathroom so it's like you might have to stop every two to three hours anyway um, at least with how much I hydrate, I, I stop every two to three hours um, and way more often than that if I've been drinking coffee. But just keep in mind, like plan for stops and plan for wanting to take a couple pictures at a beautiful, you know, landmark or, or you know, it's like plan, like cushion it by a couple hours. So, so again, you're, you're, you've gotten to your destination by the light of day and you have time to stretch and get it settled into where you're going to stay for the night and then wake up early the next morning and stretch again before you get your booty in that vehicle and sit down for the next four five six seven eight hours um uh and another thing with being in the car if you're taking turns driving with um maybe i should do an entire video on road trips and how to be an awesome road trip uh co-pilot yeah, I'll, I'll make a road trip video specifically some other time. But um, I got this tip from my dad. Thanks, dad. Um, two hours. Two hour shifts. Two hour, two and a half maybe. Okay, tops three. But don't team up on a road trip thinking you're going to drive for four or five hours straight without, you know, without switching drivers. It's just a bit too much time. Now, I don't know if somebody's like, hey, I love driving and I'm just going to drive for four or five hours and you can sleep. Maybe that could work. But there seems to be something better about these shorter shifts. Um, two, two to three hours seems to be like the sweet spot. And I mean, if that seems like changing drivers really frequently for you, um, I really highly suggest that you just give this a try and see how you like it. Because... There's something about knowing you're gonna be done in a couple of hours that it relieves the anxiety if you start to feel sleepy. Also, if you have to pee and you're like, oh man, it's 1.30, but you've been driving since, um, you know, 12, you know you're gonna switch drivers in about 30 minutes. So you can say to your, your co-pilot, like, hey, co-pilot, we're gonna be switching in about uh, 20 minutes. Do, do you mind if I pull off now? Because I have to pee, whatever, you know? It's like, 
you know when you're going to switch, so you know you get to relax if you're the co-pilot. If you've just switched, you know you've got a couple hours to read your book or like do your social media time or, or map the next uh, place you want to go get food or whatever the case. But, um, but it's just something about that two, two to three hour switching out. It, 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 you never get overly exhausted with the driving. And also the, the person who you know, maybe they want to take a nap and they're able to sleep while you're driving, an hour and a half nap is the perfect amount of time to sleep. So it might take about, you know, 20, 30 minutes to like fall asleep, but you, but 90 minutes is like the perfect amount of time to feel refreshed and to be able to take over driving. Whereas, um, sleeping for too much longer than that can get you into that like REM state where you're like super out of it and, you know, really tired. Okay. So we're talking about reducing pain while traveling. We're talking about in the car on a long drive or flying. So another way to reduce pain is to wear super comfortable clothing. Um, I don't, I've been in the airport where there's somebody like heels, you know, jewelry, you know, like business, like I've seen people in tight jeans and like multiple layers of clothing. And I'm thinking to myself, like, are you on like a 30 minute flight? And are you arriving and meeting up with someone to go on a date immediately? Because like, what are you wearing? You know what I mean? Like, I love to be in style, don't get me wrong. Um, I normally wear lots of rings and jewelry and, you know, stuff with metal and buckles and holsters. But when I'm traveling, I might wear my holsters because they don't count that item as an item. You know, it's like you're wearing it, so it's like a garment. It's like a pocket belt, right? Like you could have your phone and all your stuff in your pocket belt, but the pocket belt doesn't count as a, um, a an item or like a carry-on. So anyway, it's a, it's a way to get away with a little extra storage. But let's say I'm wearing my holsters because I'm going to be sitting down. I don't want some bulky belt poking into me while I'm sitting down or having to wear a seat belt. Oh my gosh, that's the worst. So if I'm on a flight, for example, or in the car, I'll choose to wear my uh, shoulder holsters with like my phone right here and my wallet right here, chapstick, vape pen, whatever you need to have readily available. So I'll have my stuff on me with my holsters because it's an easy way to like be able to sit down and not have anything pushing into me. But even on a flight, as soon as I get on that plane, I take the holsters off and I drape them over my knee and I let them sit there on my knee for the duration of the flight because I just don't want the bulkiness. So comfort over style is so important. If you're going to be in the plane or you're going to be on two planes, like you got a three hour flight and then a layover for two hours and then another three hour flight, why not wear your pajamas? You know, why not wear your Ugg boots and your sweats and your softest, most comfiest shirt? Like screw wearing a bra. Seriously, no bras. Okay. Hell no. Just wear the comf, no belt, you know, like in, unless, you know, you need it for your pants. But like, if you're going to wear a belt, wear a soft belt that's not so bulky, not some like spiky belt with, you know, rivets all over it. But comfortable clothing over stylish. When you get to your, say you're flying, when you arrive at your place that you've been traveling to, you can always go in the bathroom and put the bra on and put the jewelry on. And, you know, it, it even, like, metal sets off the stupid alarm anyway, so, or, you know, like, your watch. So you can, like, bring a little bag or, like, a little box with all your jewelry in it and then get to your place that you're going to go and, like, go in the bathroom and, like, brush your teeth or whatever, especially if you're meeting your hot date, and put on your jewelry and freshen yourself up and then walk out and, you know, get your bag. But it's, like, why would you wear all this, like, tight, restrictive, bulky, pokey, uncomfortable clothing just to sit on a plane or sit in a car like what like don't don't do it okay listen to me learn from your girl over here comfort over style i literally have certain garments that are my like driving home from burning man outfit it's like yoga pants uh, or it's like a, a slip like like a dress that's like it's like a it's like a tank top dress that I literally, I could wear with boxers underneath and I'm super comfortable, you know? You want the softest fabric, the most comfortable material, warm, especially if you get cold, or cool if you're someone who gets hot, and, you know, put on the flare when you get there. 
There you go. There's my there's your mantra for this video. Put on the flare when you get there. Um, okay, next point here I have is beware of those heavy backpacks. Oh my gosh. I've gone on trips where I was like, oh, I need like a bigger carry-on so that I can fit more stuff and just check one bag. And if you can check a bag, especially if you like fly southwest and the bags are free, just check stuff. But make sure you've got that neck pillow and the warm jacket for, you know, if you get stuck in that airport overnight, you're going to want that neck pillow and something to wrap around your body. You don't want everything to be on the plane. Okay. Bring a, bring a big purse or something with snacks in it and the neck pillow and a book to read and all that good stuff. But okay. So one time I was on this uh, long journey and I was going to have like a two and a half hour layover between flights. And I thought, Oh, I need like a big backpack so that I can bring a laptop and snacks and some clothes and all this other stuff. Well, this big backpack that I borrowed from my boyfriend actually was so freaking heavy. Okay. And I'm carrying it as a backpack, ideal to carry it on both shoulders and wear it as a legit backpack. Don't wear it on one shoulder. That's a great way to strain your shoulder and arrive with a, you know, like not in your shoulder. So, um, anyway, uh, this backpack was really just, you know, I'm carrying it around the airport. I'm having to walk to figure out where my next flight is. And I just realized, man, I'm carrying around this big ass backpack so that I can whip out my laptop and do 20 minutes of laptop time. I, that two and a half hour layover on that connecting flight was more like 30 minutes of, of free time because I had to get food and stuff. So just remember that you probably don't have as, as much downtime as you think you're going to have. And carrying around a heavy backpack is not going to feel great on your back. So if you can, put it on wheels. If you can check a different bag, even if it's not full, you know, it's nice to have some space in your bag so that you can bring stuff home, but bring your little carry on suitcase and wheel it. Like I had this like light bulb moment after carrying that heavy backpack around. And I thought, Oh my God, I should just bring my small suitcase as my carry on bag and check a duffel bag or check a larger suitcase or whatever. Sometimes you don't need that much shit. But anyway, you know what I'm saying? I realized rather than carrying things on my shoulders that were heavy, that caused a lot of upper back pain and trap tension by the time I was done with the traveling and I was like so tight from that. And I thought if I had a really, you know, I need to get a new suitcase that has the better, bigger, more, more smoother wheels. But um, if you could be hauling around a suitcase, even though it doesn't have a ton of stuff in it, it's just got like a laptop, some snacks and a jacket, maybe your bra you're gonna put on, some jewelry book to read. You could be wheeling this thing around on a handle for with way less physical effort than carrying a heavy backpack. So if you can, put it on wheels instead of your favorite backpack. And you know what else? You could even, if you need a backpack where you're going because you're gonna be taking some hikes or whatever and you wanna be able to have a day pack with you, you can put the backpack empty inside of the carry-on bag with the wheels. So you can still bring your backpack. You just don't have to carry your stuff in it. All right, so last piece here is... Oh, wait, I have two more things. Okay, so um, unfortunately, this is the way it is. You got to expect delays. Now, you want to hope for the best, but prepare for the worst. So you want to hope that your flight's on time and everything's smooth, but what if it's not? What if it gets delayed? What if you get stuck in the airport overnight and it's an airport that doesn't even stay open after 9 o'clock? Snacks, okay, like non-perishable like dried fruit, beef jerky, nuts, um, snacks. Can't say this enough. It's really nice to have your own snacks because airport prices are insane and they might not have the variety of foods that you want to be eating. You know, like you might want paleo, gluten-free, vegan stuff and they've got Funyuns. So that might fall into that category, but really do you want the MSG? You know what I mean? It's, it's tough. So prepare for the worst, hope for the best. But what I mean by that is just expect that there might be a delay and that you might wish you had something to read. 
and you might really want that neck pillow if you're uh, trying to take a nap in a weird situation or um, you might want a, a, that sweater or something to kind of like wrap around your body if you get cold um, and you might uh, need some snacks and you might uh, get delayed you know you might get delayed so um, always have kind of like what you absolutely need with you you don't want to have everything checked onto the plane and then um, realize later that you don't have these things that you need or if you're going to get these things that you need now you have to spend you know $17 on a thing of beef jerky to eat a little snack okay and then a couple more uh, wonderful things that really help reduce pain while traveling are things like a um, ball massager let me show you one of these guys that I've got right here Okay, so I actually make these beauties. So this is just a colorful sock with a pair of um, tennis balls inside of it. So this thing is a lifesaver because you can put it uh, behind your back and like lean up against it and like do a little massage on that tight spot. So you could even like do this like while you're on the plane. Oh man, I got a knot right there. Ooh. So this thing is amazing it's also great for the lumbar so you can stick it down below your lower back and you're just like ah oh. so whether you're driving or flying this thing can fit in your bag you can fit in your backpack or carry on so bring this guy with you because if your flight gets delayed or you have a connection flight where you have to kill some time in the airport you could go sit on the floor and roll on this thing and you're going to be going like oh my god i'm so glad i have this and get over your fear of looking weird you're going to be so stoked and then people are going to come by and be like what is that oh where do i get one of those and then you just send them over to me okay but it's going to be a game changer for you to just have something that you can use to like work on your like to to put some pressure on a on a pressure point um, they also make these out of, um, you can buy them with like the lacrosse ball style where they're like really, really hard. These are a little, have a little more forgiving. They're a little more give, so they're a little more comfortable. But um, if you have one of the lacrosse ball, sty ball style, by all means, bring that one. Also, um, driving for a long period of time, you can put this guy underneath your lower back. <gasps> oh, whoops. And that can feel fantastic on your lower back if you've been driving for a long time and your back's starting to feel tight. But again, along the lines of using some kind of prop, um, maybe not for the flight, unless you've got that carry-on bag that's half empty, but a, um, I have this thing called a, anyway, sorry, you can't buy it anymore. I've looked it up, I've tried to find it. I can't find them online, so I don't even need to bother telling you about it. But it's basically a, a cushion that is vertical and it has straps on either side. So it essentially straps to the car seat like this and it creates this vertical cushion thing. Now, you could use something like this, like a narrow pillow, especially if you're on a long drive. This thing is not gonna hurt you to have this around. But for the flight, you don't want something too bulky, you know what I mean. But what you do is you put this thing behind your upper back, like right at the level of your shoulders and all the way down as far as it goes. It might only go mid back, that's okay. But the idea is that now your shoulders can go back. This, this feels better already. Like I am going to do this on my next flight. The, the thing that I have, the one that has the straps, I keep it in my car and when I sit in my car and I'm driving it helps me put my shoulders back and sit up straight which actually alleviates the pressure on the internal organs it's brilliant okay it's got a million reasons why it's awesome I don't know why they're not more popular but again it's a vertical cushion that goes between your shoulder blades on a flight on a you know sitting in front of the TV driving your car whatever so I use it while I'm driving my car it's permanently in my car always which is why I forget to take it when I go on flights but it lets you put your shoulders back and your abs get a little more engagement and so you're not like sitting like this you know I've something about those airplane the the, the it always feels like you're kind of like this you know it's not very comfortable but anyway you can use that pillow thing on your long road trip and if your lower back starts to hurt, turn it sideways and shove it underneath your lumbar back. Ah, oh, doesn't that feel better, okay? And sometimes it feels good to shove it vertically still all the way down to the seat so that it's pressing up against your sacrum, which is that 
flat bony area at the top of your butt crack. But if you push it all the way down to the seat, oh, it can just give you this amazing pressure that alleviates the pain in that lower back and, and hips. I don't know how it works, guys, but it, it works, okay? So use a narrow pillow. I mean, you even could like roll up a towel or something, but um, the tennis ball thing is brilliant. This might be a little too hard for the long drive. It might feel good to have it back there for 15 or 20 minutes, but the pillow you could have back there for hours, okay? But um, this thing is your best friend. It fits easily in your bag and it will help you tons. And then when you get to where you're going, if you have any tight spots that have developed from the traveling or your shoulders are tight or your back hurts or whatever, you can just roll up against the wall with that thing or lay on the floor on top of it and do some pressure point work on yourself. So um, yeah, I hope that this helps you to reduce pain while traveling so that you can take some travels this year and maybe go visit your family and, and uh, have a wonderful time and not be stressed out about hurting too much when you get to where you're going. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, definitely subscribe to my channel if you're not already. I appreciate you. If you are subscribed already, thank you so much for your continued support. And yeah, happy travels, everyone. Have a good day.